All right, guys. So we're here at Mai's Han, which actually stands for horse ears because it's shaped like a horse ear. And I'm already really impressed with this mountain. Of course, it has the standard food stalls and stuff in the very beginning, which seem to have a lot of delicious foods. But right away, you have a nice little water stream right next to you. And the fall foliage is fantastic. But in the summer, I could tell this will be also great because with those water streams, it keeps it very cool and pleasant to be walking. But right now, I'm also seeing like a nice little reservoir. And you see like, a sort of El Capitan Yosemite vibe type of half dome thing happening over there, which is pretty unique to me. Oh, the pictures are coming out really nice. Are you liking it? Yes, I like it. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with Fatty, which in Korean, it could translate into party because Koreans don't have an yeah. F sound. Like me party. <laughs> yeah. So are you having a party mood right now? How do you like this mountain so far? I like, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. She doesn't really like to hike. So let's see if she's going to still like it or hate it even more when we make it to the very top. <laughs> May, you're walking through rainbow right now. <laughs> All right, we're at our destination. It's not the summit, but there is some stone steps up here. Wow, check out this rock formation, guys. It's so smooth. And they say it's because it's super windy up here. In the winter, it's so cold that the icicles go upwards. I really don't want to come here in the winter. Wow, and here it is, guys. The little stone step tower things they make. And look at this little valley that's created with a carving of all these smooth mountains to both sides. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. This definitely stands out out of all the other mountains I've climbed here in Korea. So in Korea, it's quite common to see Buddhists make these little towers out of rocks. You'll see them along the river streams and such, but I've never seen them make it this tall. Oh my God, guys, this is ridiculous. I think the reason why it's more impressive that it's here is that because this location is known to be windy. So it would be knocking those things over. And I think that's why they had to build such a large, strong foundation so that it stays up there and reaches the heavens. Now, this is definitely nowhere near the top of this mountain. And it seems like there's several trails that branch off from here. And I also see a temple that's further up the mountain based on my drone scouting. So if you're an avid hiker, I definitely recommend that you put this mountain on your list to do when you're here in Korea. <laughs> my friend Mai is uh, doing duty, taking pictures for locals. Oh, look at this guys. The weather is so perfect today. So now we're headed to a maze park. I'm very curious about this. Wow. Guys, we're not even at the maze. But oh, I, I, I wanted to see these. These pink muli grass things. They come out in the fall in Korea. They're so beautiful. It's so fluffy. Fluffy. So it's 3.45 right now. This is the perfect time to come here, guys. It's just how the sun is striking the grass. Uh, maybe even up to 5 o'clock. It'll be a bit more golden, but wow, this is so magical. I love this place. And you know, a lot of people tell me that the landscape in Korea just reminds me too much of America, but I don't know where in America they're from, but this doesn't look anything like California to me. And I pronounce the booby peaks. <laughs> Guys, this maze is legit difficult. Even the people that work here have been searching since this morning for a hose they lost. And they're asking me to try to find it with my drone. <laughs> they gave us only 20 minutes to have free time around here, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. So at first glance, I thought it was quite gimmicky. I thought maybe the hedges are too short, but I'm 
five foot eight and a half rounded up to nine and I still can't see over these hedges. It's really vast out here. I honestly think the average person is gonna get lost here but thankfully I have a drone and the easiest way I can explain this maze is that it looks like a man's genitals. <laughs> You got this little circular area with the tree, that would be, I guess, the scrotum. And then you got the two testicles to the side, and then this long thing that comes out from the center there. And uh, I've found my way to the center by wandering around the outer edges of one of the testicles. Alright, thanks to my droney, I think I have navigated myself to what I would say is the right testicle of this maze from the scrotum central area. Now I'm just gonna head back because uh, that's, that took me like just 20 minutes just to navigate around the scrotum and the testicles. I'm not even gonna attempt a tip now. It's, it's just too far and too long. Lucky for people who would just rather spectate, they have these observation posts up here in this Hanok style. And you get a nice view of the maze from up top. And by the way, this attraction is completely free of charge. The province of Jinan has really gone out of their way to make this available for everybody who visits here so that they could attract more visitors and tourists. I mean, with those booby peaks right there along with the genital maze, this is a, a travel destination that every pervert like me puts on top of their list. Oh, this will be your he is video. futilely trying to bury his poo-poo. Alright, so to wrap up the day, our final destination for day one will be this museum where we're going to be experiencing Korean hanji or traditional paper by doing arts and crafts with it. Wow, look at this! So this is really cool. We're going to be able to decorate these traditional Korean rubber shoes but it's made out of traditional Korean hanji and we're going to decorate it with flowers and stuff because there's a saying in Korea that says you should only walk on flower roads which means your future will be flowery. Alright, so I just finished putting another coat of the white paper to smooth it out and now we'll be putting the designs. I have uh... Something that would have my American capitalist side proud and this would be my channel proud and this would make Mayu proud. So we worked on this for roughly about an hour but you could really get creative and spend a lot of time doing this. It's very relaxing. So they have lots of other programs available like this one. You can make traditional Korean masks. Here's what looks like the canvas. You could definitely spend the whole day here. They do recommend that you make an appointment, but you could just walk in. And if you get done faster than your friends, you could also take a look around the different exhibits that they have here. All right, guys. So we're back at my mountain, but we're gonna have dinner. Oh, meat! Everything's looking really good. Mm. All right, guys, and here it is. Hold up. This is actually a root, but they're gonna grill it. Some of these roots with the onions. It actually has a chewy texture like meat. Even that smoky flavor. Alright guys, that was a fantastic meal. Super happy to have had that. Definitely hit the spot. The next day. Top of the morning to ya. We've got another big day planned ahead, but we're gonna start out with breakfast. Which is a dish I only like if it's exceptional. Guys, I thought this was shrimp or something, but this is tempura ginseng. Wait a minute, I completely forgot the chanyang cook juice here. If you like spicy, I recommend that you put that. Alright guys, I have to step outside to rave about how amazing that food is. That might be the best kongnamu gukbap I've ever had in my life. And that's a very common dish, so I've had a lot of kongnamu gukbap. But that is so clean, it's legit. The side dishes are just full of unique things. Like that ginseng tempura. I've never had ginseng tempura in my life because that's very expensive. You don't tempura that crap. 
But over here in Maison, you got a lot of ginseng, you got a lot of that todok, the roots that are really healthy and delicious for you. So all the side dishes and the food have that very healthy herbal overtone to it, which I highly recommend that you come out here to experience. <laughs> Alright guys, so we just made a quick roadside stop here. It's a Meta Sequoia Road and these trees line this road in a very straight manner for kilometers and kilometers. It's quite scenic. Decided to just take pictures here and uh, there's nothing that you haven't seen before but I thought it was scenic and uh, yeah, definitely watch out for the cars around here. There aren't that many. But I think that's why we, we think like, oh, it's safe. And then <laughs> we have to be careful. And it uh, takes really mad skills to fly your drone here because if you go too high, you'll hit the trees. Too low, you'll hit the cars. I also got to say the people at Chinon are really friendly. If you notice, this is like a really nice lawn here. We thought this was a tourist destination, but it's actually private property. We're just going around taking pictures, walking over their grass and stuff and only later realized it was private property, but those people were just so friendly to us. They smiled in there saying hello. It's really a lovely ambiance. <laughs> Guys, so we're here at a cafe because a trip out to the Korean countryside is never complete without a cafe visit. And I gotta say, even out here in the boonies, the cafes are fantastic. As a matter of fact, the cafes are better out here in the boonies than in Seoul. Just look at how natural it is. So serene, so peaceful. Oh, you can just definitely spend the whole day here relaxing by this amazing deck. There's almost nobody here except us. And although I want to keep it as my little secret hidden spot, it's just too great of a place to not share with you guys. So I'll put the name in there, search for it the way that I type it up. I know my Google Maps links don't work anymore. You know, you can blame Google for that, but uh, you could still search for it and find it yourself. Cheers. Ooh. So this has ginseng and different kinds of salt. Oh, oh, I like it. And they also give us a little stomach hand warmer. <laughs> so are you enjoying what you're able to enjoy today? Yeah, even it's very hard to visit with my kids, oh. but still it's enjoyable. We got some ginseng fruit snacks and tea. Oh, that's bitter. That's it's raw ginseng, but I, I feel energetic already. That's a little less bitter. All right, guys. So our final food stop for the day is gonna be bibimbap with mushroom. It's like a mix between a soup and a casserole. It's a pretty simple menu, but I was surprised and impressed with the soft tofu yesterday. So I got high expectations of this. Cheers. All right guys, just finished eating. I'm so full. So it's great that we have a nice walking trail here in Maishan. It's perfect weather, perfect season. Look at the autumn foliage. Now while flying a drone over this area, I realized a lot of what we did was all based around here. The restaurants, that maze park with the purple grass and even my mountain another one of the entrances is back here there's just a lot of trails around my mountain so everything is going to be centered around this location and the other main entrance to my mountain that we went to traveling in chinan is going to be really really easy blue red berry oh. so they have these berries here they call them mountain berries? Hmm. <laughs> I think it's like all seeds, but it doesn't taste too bad. Apparently Europeans make jam out of this. There's a lot of fruits here that Koreans don't really eat because there's just other fruit to eat, they say. 
Alright guys, so just had that magnolia flower tea which I guess they harvest before it actually blooms and putting it in tea makes it bloom. Really delicious and they say in Eastern medicine it's great for people who have allergies as it helps them. But anyways, this wraps up my tour of Chinan. It's a really small, quiet, quaint little place that not even Koreans know about. But I have to say I'm leaving with a very deep impression. I'm not gonna lie to you and say, you know, you're gonna ha come here and see the most magnificent maze park, the most magnificent mountain or, you know, like a skywalk or something of that manner. There isn't just one thing that I would say it sticks out as an Instagram worthy thing. But when you come here, you're gonna really get this intimate, authentic feel of the Korean countryside. I'm leaving with this feeling of being a part of this community. Everyone here has been just so kind to us. I mean, even at that Medisequire Road, I mean, eh, yeah, you come from the West, there's gonna be Medisequire Roads everywhere. But you know how just the people were so friendly and welcoming to you? That's what really sticks out in my mind. And all of that sort of is presented in their cuisine. The cuisine is not only natural and pure and healthy for you, but they serve it to you in generous portions and at super affordable prices. So I highly recommend if you want to get a feeling of what the real authentic Korean countryside is, take a trip out to Chinan. <laughs> Yesterday. Wow, guys, soft tofu here is legit. The side dishes are simple, but they look super delicious and locally produced. At first, I discounted this place just based on the looks of it, but oh my gosh, I'm really impressed. This might be the best meal I had this whole month. Oh, this. Tofu is so legit. You can tell it was hand wrapped. Yeah, check out the suyu. Now, this is the first time I've ever had suyu on tofu like this. It really adds a rich nuttiness to the flavor that you don't get with just the meat. 